Welcome back. This video will be the first of two on lack of lubrication. Lack of lubrication is one of the leading root causes of gearbox failure. This can occur when the lubricant level in your gearbox is too low. What is oftentimes ignored is that it can also occur when your gearbox is completely full of lubricant, but the parts aren't being properly lubricated. When the lubricant level is too low, metal above the lubricant is exposed to air, which also contains moisture, which in turn will cause the metal to rust or oxidize. This oxidation of the metal on the gears, bearings, and at the seal contact area will cause pitting. The actual rust particles can be worn off during operation and become, become contaminants in the oil. Too low of a lubricant level can also cause dry starts for a part or most of the input bearings and shaft. Under heavy loaded conditions, for example, if the pivot is going uphill, the extreme pressure on the face of the gears and on the bearings will cause galling to occur. Galling is welding and tearing of points from one surface to the other in the contact areas of two mating parts and normally occurs on the gear teeth and on the bearing rollers and race. When we talk about lack of lubrication in a box that is full of lubricant, there are two areas that we want to discuss, viscosity and additive systems. So let's start at the beginning with viscosity. Here we have a viscosity equivalence chart. And so this is my question to you. What is the difference between 50 weight motor oil and 90 weight gear oil? For the most part, the answer we hear is 40. But if you will look at the SAE engine oil classification and slide across to the SAE gear oil classification, you will see that they are both in the same viscosity range. You will also see that an AGMA 5 or an ISO 220 are in the same range. Each of these is a different classification system. The ISO 220 is a much narrower classification system than the SAE gear oil system. In fact, if you look at the 90 weight gear oil compared to the ISO system, it would include all of the ISO 150 and ISO 220 and even part of the ISO 320. On the bottom, it comes close to the ISO 100. Because of this, when you purchase a gear oil that is classified as a 90 weight, it could be all over the place on viscosity. It is a good practice to look at the tech data sheet and see if the typical specifications show an ISA number or AGMA number. For your information, sometimes you may have a specification sheet for a piece of equipment that you own and the manufacturer uses a number with SSU or SUS or even CST. If you will look at either side of this chart, you will find those numbers at a given temperature. With CST, the temperatures will be at 40 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Celsius. With SSU or SUS, which actually mean the same thing, temperatures will be at 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 210 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you find the numbers that the equipment specification sheet is asking for, you can then cross-reference them over to any of these other classification systems. One thing to note about this cross-reference chart, it is for single grade oils. In pivot gearboxes, the manufacturers are asking for an 85140 GL5 gear lubricant to meet warranty requirements. This would correspond to an ISO 320. We'll address the GL5 later when we discuss additive systems. If you look at the viscosity equivalence chart, you can see what that corresponds to. If you put a product in that is only an ISO 150 or ISO 220, you can see that it is less viscous than what the manufacturers are requiring. With a lower viscosity comes lower film strength, meaning it will not carry the same load as a more viscous oil before adding performance additives. If the oil viscosity is lower than required, it will then have to rely on the performance additives to carry the load, which in turn will cause them to be depleted. Once the performance additives that have been covering for the wrong base oil are gone, the low viscosity base oil will allow metal to metal contact and gearbox failure is imminent. The right base oil is very important in dealing with lack of lubrication. It becomes an even more important issue when we look at putting a semi-fluid grease into these pivot gearboxes. To help you understand this, we need to think of grease as a sponge that holds oil in place. The sponge is not what is doing the lubricating in the gearbox. The oil 
and the additives in the oil are doing the lubricating. As an example, we have seen semi-fluid greases that have base oils as low as an ISO 22 or even an ISO 32. Let's look at the chart. As you can see, the viscosities of these base oils are around a 5 to 10 weight engine oil. This will not have the film strength to make the gearbox last. Metal to metal contact will occur unless the performance additives carry the load. And if they do, they will be depleted rapidly. This is only a short term fix. Because of the application that these gearboxes are in, using a semi-fluid grease seems to be a logical fit. And in fact, if stopping the leaking is the only concern, the thicker the better. Well, let's talk about that. We've addressed the viscosity of the base oil and the need for it to be correct. And so we also need to have the correct viscosity of the base grease. If the base grease is too light or thin and there are already damaged seals and shafts on the gearbox, it will not hold oil and the additives that are in the oil. They won't stay in the load carrying zones where they are needed. However, remembering that grease is a sponge that holds oil in place, if it is too thick, it will allow cavitation to occur in these same load zone areas. This lack of lubrication will cause metal-metal contact producing wear particles. These particles in an oil would work their way to the bottom of the gearbox, but in a grease that is too thick, it's not the case. They are now causing the performance additives to be used and depleted. When and if these performance additives are able to get to the load zones. In fact, sometimes the only way the additives can get to the load zone is because the increased friction from metal to metal contact increases the temperature which allows the grease to flow or thin down. Too heavy a viscosity of the base grease is not the long-term answer. Base greases are measured by penetration. A penetrometer is used which drops a weighted cone into a sample of grease that has been worked in a grease worker. Then the depth of the cone moves into the grease at five seconds is measured. This number represents tenths of millimeters. Here we have a chart showing the different NLGI consistency grades. These grades go all the way from a triple lot, three zeros, to a number six grade. For example, a number two grade would be what you would normally use in your grease gun, and a number one would be a gun grease you might use in winter. The aught or zero grade, the double aught or double zero grade, and the triple aught or triple zero grade, we would consider to be in the semi-fluid range. From testing in these gearboxes, we have found that aught and double aught are too thick to carry heavy loads and will ultimately fail if required to do so. So the semi-fluid lubricant that is too thick, it might work fine at stopping the leaking for a few years, but is it a long-term fix? No. Lack of lubrication is going to eventually cause the gearbox to fail. So why does Sprinkle Lube 1200 work so well? We covered the issues of the base oil and the base grease. The viscosity of the base oil in Sprinkle Lube 1200 is the same as an 85140 gear oil or ISO 320, thus protecting your gearbox and warranty. The base oil is not too thin as most greases are. The base grease in Sprinkle Lube 1200 is thick enough to slow down leaking when it is sitting still, but thins down out of a grease range with movement. This is called thixotropy, and without this quality, lack of lubrication can and will occur. It's just a matter of time. To illustrate thixotropy, let's use the example of toothpaste. When you put it on your toothbrush, it is thick. When you brush your teeth, it thins down. If you don't wash out your toothbrush after you're done and leave some of the toothpaste on it, it will set up by the next day and be thick again. To further illustrate this, let's take a look at some Sprinkle Lube 1200. Here we have split the screen to show you a before stirring and after stirring video of the same sample. You will notice that we only stirred it for a few seconds. You can immediately see the difference when we tip the pan slightly. I hope this has helped you understand thixotropy. Don't be confused about the thinning down of a grease by temperature. Movement, not a change in temperature, thin down the Sprinkler Lube 1200. This feature is very important because when the grease is thick enough to slow leaking, testing has proven that it is too thick to carry heavy loads in these gearboxes. That's why we made Sprinkler Lube 1200 Thixotropic, a long-term fix. To learn more 
about lack of lubrication, we will address additive systems in the next video.